Okay. So, uh, you have been hearing over the past uh, three days a lot about containers. And uh, so, one of the things that we are uh, talking today about is security. Uh, so, there was recently, a uh, couple of months back, a survey by uh, DevOps.com. And they asked people, uh, what is the number one barrier for adoption of containers in a production environment? Uh, any guesses for the answer? Security. So, uh, my name is Abhishek Gupta. I am a cloud security architect at Intel. Uh, my co-presenters, Raghu Yaluri and Arhan, uh, principal, uh, both of them principal engineer at uh, Intel, uh, they could not uh, sh show up for some reason. So I'm going to be three persons in one uh, today. So the agenda for today, uh, I was planning to give an overview of containers and uh, talk about container security. What are the top customer asks that we have uh, uh, seen talking to various customers and also various architects across different companies? And uh, what is Intel's focus in this space? What are we doing for, uh, for enabling trusted and secure containers? Who verifies trust? Uh, that is an important question. And uh, we are going to show a reference architecture with OpenStack. And I'm going to uh, show a live demo for the same, the work that we have done with respect to OpenStack and containers. And, th and then uh, finally, I'm going to talk about hardware-assisted runtime integrity and also the runtime isolation. Uh, if you were in the last uh, session, uh, there was a mention of clear containers. So that's where I'm going to talk about the hardware-assisted isolation. Uh, and then finally, we'll summarize and uh, end with a call to action. So containers, starting uh, from the previous session, I'm sure many of you might be there. And there was a lot of uh, good uh, uh, mention about what are the different technologies, namespace, C groups, and so on. And there have been uh, various talks previous three days. So I'm going to keep it short and concise, uh, and not bore you with the same thing again and again. So containers essentially a very lightweight overhead, uh, light overhead virtualization mechanism using operating system uh, virtualization. So primary technologies that are used are uh, namespaces and C groups. And they essentially look like VMs from outside. You can SSH, you can ping. Uh, the only uh, critical feature is that all the operating system containers, they share the OS uh, kernel. So unlike VMs, in the case of VMs, you have the whole uh, guest operating system running inside a VM. But in the case of containers, you are sharing that OS, and only the app or uh, the associated libraries would run inside an execution container. Now, the containers have existed for 10-plus uh, years, as also mentioned in some of the previous talks. What is really driven uh, the momentum for containers is Docker and uh, similar other uh, 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 management systems for containers. And what Docker essentially provides, uh, the innovation is that it provides a way to package and uh, deploy applications, containers. So you take the application uh, container, you can take it from one place, you can move it around, you can run it to another place. And another, in, uh, that is the concept of uh, Docker images. And another innovation with Docker images, which makes uh, Docker uh, very uh, unique, is that they have used the union file system concept in uh, Linux to make sure that an image consists of different layers, so that you are only adding a diff to, uh, to, uh, to the new image. So if you have a base image Ubuntu, like shown here, and if you are adding another image, um, say Apache, you are only installing certain packages which forms a diff or the layer, so the base um, the base package or the base layer can be shared across multiple containers, which make sure that containers launch uh, very quickly within milliseconds. So various orchestration mechanisms are also uh, there for containers, OpenStack, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, Mesos, Chorus, Tectonic, Fleet. Various, various, of various uh, orchestration mechanisms are there. So how security comes into picture, the major, uh, uh, major differentiation with respect to VM for containers, as I mentioned, is that VMs have, a, have their own guest operating system, whereas in the case of containers, they're sharing the OS kernel. Now, one of, one of the possible attack is that you have an uh, adversary in the host operating system 
So the host operating system will be a, will also have the Linux kernel, but there could be also other applications which are running along with other containers. So there, if the host operating system is compromised or it's tempered, there could be an adversary which can break into the container and uh, it can uh, try leaking of the data or it can even temper the container. All kinds of attacks are possible. So this is one of the attack where the adversary is in the host. Another, uh, which is the more uh, common or the more important threat that comes into picture uh, considering the difference between containers and VM is if there is an adversary in container, it can potentially break out of the container and affect either the host operating system, uh, host kernel, or some other container. Now, these attacks are possible even in the case of VMs, but they are uh, more difficult in the case of VMs as compared to containers, because in the case of VMs, you have to break, break in uh, uh, more number of layers of security, because you have to first, from the application, you have to break, uh, break into the guest operating system, and from the guest operating system, you have to break into the hypervisor. Whereas in the case of containers, you can you just need one uh, 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 one uh, security breach, which is you have to break in, break uh, from outside the container. So summarizing the attacks that I described, and we also ran these through uh, various customers, and also uh, we talked to Docker uh, security team, Nathan Meckley. Docker host integrity. That is the integrity of the host that the host operating host operating system and the Docker daemon, the whole platform is not uh, tempered. That is one of the security opportunity or the customer asks. The second is once you make sure that the host platform itself is, uh, in, uh, its integrity is assured, you need to assure the integrity of the containers themselves. That, that is the container or the application which is running on a platform that itself is not tempered. So finally, then uh, other customer ask are uh, that the runtime integrity of the containers and the host operating system and also the runtime isolation. So if you are running the containers in a multi-tenant environment, what happens is how do you make sure that these containers are isolated and the attack I just described in the previous uh, slide, how do you prevent such kind of attack? Finally, another ask is, if you have in a cloud environment where you want to run both VMs and containers, how do you run them in the same control plane? How do you have an orchestration mechanism such as OpenStack, which can manage both containers and VMs? So today's focus is going to be hardware-based integrity assurance for containers, including the platform and the app that is running in the, inside the container. So the four focus area I just described, launch integrity of the host or the platform, the integrity of the containers that are running on the top of that, and then moving on to the runtime integrity of the host and also the isolation of the containers. Any uh, burning questions at this point of time with respect to the attacks? Okay. So trusted containers, uh, what we have done is we have taken the same models that we have applied to uh, VMs, trusted VMs, and applied similar model to containers. So the idea is that the first step is to assure the integrity of the host platform, which consists of, in this case, uh, the hardware, the host operating system, and the Docker daemon. So this is achieved through a technology called Intel Cloud Integrity Technology which builds upon the hardware consisting of Intel TXT, which is a trusted execution technology, and TPM. So Intel TXT, the way it works is that you have a hardware root of trust. So you start from the hardware root of trust and you establish a chain of trust starting from the hardware root up the stack, from hardware root to uh, BIOS to uh, uh, the OS kernel. And we have extended that further from the OS kernel to operating system services and packages such as uh, Docker daemon in this case. So what happens is as the system boots up, uh, during the system boot up itself, you start from the hardware root and it uh, calculates the hash of the next component of the stack. So it takes the cryptographic hash, which uh, the, this process is also called as measurement. So you take those hashes. So for example, the hardware root will uh, take the hash of the BIOS 
And these hashes are stored in the TPM, which is a trusted platform module, which is like a secure chip. In the TPMs, uh, PCR, which are registers in the TPM. So th this is all in hardware. So as the system is booting up, you, uh, you uh, take the measurements of all these components and store them in uh, TPM PCR registers. So once you have these hashes stored in the TPM registers, and you know that at a particular time the system is in a good known state, you can take these uh, measurements and treat them as your golden values or whitelist. So these are your golden values. You know that the system is not tempered at this point of time. Now every time after uh, that, whenever the system boots up, these measurements happen and these values are stored in, uh, uh, again in the TPM. So then the values at the next boot time, they can be compared against uh, with the good known values, which and the good known values are stored. Uh, it can be stored in a out of band fashion, not on the same server, but stored in a remote attestation authority, which is like a cloud integrity technology server. So this remote attestation authority can, in an out of band fashion, enforce that all these different servers are trusted. So in this case, uh, the trusted computing base, so the trust boundary. It comprises of the red dotted line shown here and includes the Docker daemon. So the Docker daemon itself is also measured. And if it's say, tempered or uh, uh, a wrong version of uh, Docker daemon is running, we can actually detect using the cloud integrity technology. The remote attestation server can see that this uh, uh, Docker daemon has tempered. And it can flag the server, the server as untrusted in that case. And when the server is untrusted, you can also initiate various actions, such as uh, if the server becomes untrusted, you can migrate the container or the VM from an uh, untrusted server to a trusted server in your data center. So once you have the integrity of the platform, which includes the Docker daemon, the next step is to assure the integrity of the containers which are running on the top of that. So in this case, we, uh, we, uh, we evaluated two models. The first model is to measure and verify the Docker images. So we extend the same concepts which, uh, which we have done using Intel TXG and Cloud Integrated Technology further to uh, the containers. So the way we do it is we insert some plugins into the Docker daemon. So the Docker daemon is modified so that every time a container launch happens, it intercepts that request and performs the measurement or the hashing of the container image or the Docker image in this case. And then compares that, um, compares those hashes with the good known values. So the good known values are created uh, in an offline fashion, and they also come up with the Docker image. So at the time of launch, you you basically perform these measurement and compare against the good known values. If the image has been tempered, you can stop the container from being launched. So the second model that is also uh, being developed is the signature based model. So if you have heard about Docker uh, Notary or Docker Content Trust, the idea is there is that every time someone creates a Docker image, you can associate a signature with that, and that signature is verified when the container is fetched from the remote uh, Docker Hub. So we want to tie up that signature mechanism with hardware root so that it's more secure. So we're tying it up with Intel Trusted Execution Technology and storing the root certificate into the TPM. Similarly, the boundary control and the geotagging policies, they also apply equally uh, to Docker containers. So what we have done in the case of VMs and Docker containers is that you can make sure that your container or the VM always run uh, into your specified geographical location. So you can say, I want to run my container only inside US or Asia or various other regions. What happened?
So I just described uh, running Docker containers on uh, bare metal or non-virtualized environment. But there is another model that you can also run containers inside a VM. So how does this uh, trust attestation and integrity work in that model? Essentially, we'll use the same concepts. So in this case, when you're launching the VM, and the VM could include the Docker daemon, we'll measure the whole VM. Or the, uh, we can also specify various different files, which could be the uh, paths inside the VM, such as the path of the Docker daemon binary. So we can say user bin Docker. And that itself would be uh, hashed and compared against the golden value as the container is, uh, as the VM is being launched. So some more details about what is measured for uh, containers or what are the different components which are hashed. So start from Intel TXT, we uh, measure the BIOS, the bootloader, initRD, Docker daemon, and the various layers of the container. Now, once we have this uh, whole mechanism to do these measurements, calculate these hashes, and store them in TPM registers, along with the remote attestation authority, how do we practically use it and tie it up with a scheduling mechanism? So how do we actually enforce that if you have some workload, they always get launched on a trusted node? So to answer that, we have uh, the scheduler of the cluster manager intelligence. So essentially, you can have different servers in your data center or a cloud. And the scheduler would have the intelligence to decide which one to pick uh, based on this trust and security properties. So various uh, scheduler orchestration mechanisms, such as OpenStack, Kubernetes, Mesos, they all can use the same model. There's some problem with that. So the idea here is that the scheduler would have the trust filter or the security filter. And then this would con when a workload launch request comes, this would contact the attestation authority. And the attestation authority would have the trust view and the trust attestation status of all the different servers in the data center. So it will return that information. And based on that information, the scheduler would make the decision uh, where to run the workload. So we tie the intelligent scheduler with the attestation authority to have these efficient, uh, secure, trust-based scheduling. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the reference architecture implementation that we did with a trusted uh, Docker container and VMs with OpenStack. So in this case, you can have VMs uh, and Docker on the same cloud. So the problem that we're addressing is that you can, in, this, in your data center of the cloud, you can have some servers which are capable of running VMs, such as KVM, some which are capable of running Docker. And out of those, some may be trusted at some point of time, some may be untrusted. How do you, how do you make sure that your workload always end, ends up in right uh, server? So in this case, we are showing uh, two servers, the bottom two, uh, which has uh, K KVM, KMU, and the top two, which are running Docker, uh, engine. And then you have the Nova scheduler. So a user would typically go to the Horizon dashboard and specify his workload. So the additional step that we have done is during the initiation of this launch, we also tag the image with certain properties. So one of the properties is we add is the hypervisor type. So we specify whether that image is a Docker image or it's a KVM image. The second change that we have done is we add a trust property to the image, which says that this image always needs to be run on a trusted server. Once we, once you have that information in the image, an image properties filter gets activated. So there is an image properties filter. The job of that image properties filter is to look at 
the properties of the image on one hand and then the properties of the host on one on another hand and then compare the two so if there is a match between the properties of the host and the properties of the image it can select that particular host so in this case we use the hypervisor type property and make sure that it matches with the host that we are trying to run it on the second problem is to select uh, trusted host so for that we have the trust filter and the location filter the location filter would select a host with an appropriate location so if you ask uh, a container to always run on a say america based geographical location it would always run there or an asia based it would always run on an asian uh, region so the trust filter would talk to the attestation authority the attestation authority would get the information of all the different servers it would actually fetch the information from the tpm registers uh, to its database and then pass that information to the scheduler and then the scheduler makes the decision based on that and in this case it runs that workload uh, fetches the workload uh, container workload from glance um, and runs it so another change that we did to enable this uh, reference architecture was particularly on the compute node we have to have a nova docker driver and the job of the nova docker driver is to talk to uh, the openstack glance based repository on one hand and the docker specific uh, file system on another hand so it takes the image from the glance format and transforms it into the docker file system the layering based format So in summary, the changes uh, in OpenStack for this reference architecture, one is that we need to add the hypervisor type property to the image. Second, we need to enable the trust filter and the image properties filter. And finally, on the compute node, we have to use the Nova Docker driver uh, to enable this reference architecture. Now, this was all about making sure that a workload always runs on a trusted compute node, but once you select the trusted compute node we all also enable that the workload itself or the image docker image itself is not tampered so for that we have to change uh, docker uh, daemon so we modify docker daemon to intercept the container launch and make sure that the measurement happens and the verification happens at that point of time from infrastructure related uh, changes you can just use standard intel txt tpm hardware so I'm going to show, uh, show a demo of the same uh, reference architecture that I just talked. Hopefully everything will work. You don't never know about demos. So this is showing uh, the trust attestation view of the various servers in the data center. In this case, we have four servers with uh, two servers being KVM servers and two servers being Docker server. So these different columns with green and red, they show the trust status of these uh, uh, different servers. So we can have different components of trust, BIOS trust, operating system trust, and overall trust. So in this case, we see that one of the Docker server is trusted and one of them is not. So you can actually go into the one which is not trusted and see what is the problem. So here we see that uh, the TPM PCR values, which are the hashes of the different components so in this case. So PCR zero, for example, would have the hashes, hash of the BIOS. So the rightmost column is the whitelist value and the middle column is the value at a at this particular point of time and we see that in this case the, the red value uh, so there is a mismatch between the hash of the docker daemon in this particular case so which shows that either the docker daemon is tempered or something is wrong with the system and you cannot uh, trust this system anymore so once you have this this information switching screen to openstack horizon dashboard here I'm showing the hypervisor uh, screen here. So we see that the two of the servers are uh, green, which means they are trusted, and two are red. 
so we see that this Docker Server 2, which I just showed, this is shown as red here. So we have this information, and now moving uh, to images. So I'm showing different images here. Some of the images, maybe it's too small. Can you see? So WebStare Liberty is an example of the Docker image. So what we did was uh, we had to uh, do a Docker save command and then use that to uh, uh, push that image into OpenStack glance. So in the same uh, uh, glance, we also have some KVM images, Cirrus. So we look into the properties that we have changed. So in the WebStare Liberty, uh, we added the hypervisor type as Docker and also added the trust uh, as true property for this particular image. So I'm going to now launch this uh, particular image, WebSphere Liberty, and let's see where it runs. Okay, so the, this instance has started running, and we can see that it selected uh, Docker Server 1 as the host. So it always selects the uh, trusted host in this case, uh, eliminating the untrusted host. What is also happening behind the scenes is it is also measuring the image, the Docker image itself, when it's launch launching the image. And it would prevent the launch of an image if it's tempered. So we'll try launching uh, another image, which is a tempered image that we have stored here. This is the tempered image. So we launch this image. It initially says success because it's able to find a host for that. But when it actually goes to the host and performs the uh, cryptographic hash measurement and verification, it, uh, it doesn't launch. So. Uh, yeah, so that's all it is for the demo. Any questions? <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So this was all about the uh, Intel Cloud Integrity Technology and the trusted uh, compute pools, and also the trusted containers, trusted applications. So moving on to some of the runtime uh, integrity and the runtime isolation work that Intel is doing in this space. And you heard in the last session about clear containers. So I'll also come to that. So the hardware-assisted runtime integrity work that we are doing is called Intel uh, Kernel Guard technology. So the idea with Intel Kernel Guard technology, IKGT, is it's a policy specification and enforcement framework where you can specify certain policies. And using hardware assistance, it would enforce those policies to protect certain kernel assets and also certain platform assets. So it can protect certain kernel assets, such as kernel page table, uh, some platform registers. So you can have a policy which says that if anybody tries to tamper with this particular asset, you, you need to uh, have some action associated with that. So you can either log that event or you can uh, uh, prevent that event from happening. So this, in, uh, in a way, extends the launch time integrity to the runtime, because during runtime, you're protecting the kernel. Uh, and this is based on a thin Intel uh, VT, virtualization technology-based hypervisor uh, layer, which is called Xmon. So the idea with Xmon is essentially it runs at a higher uh, privilege level as compared to the operating system. So it deprivileges the OS. And since it's running at a higher privilege level, it can monitor the events which are happening and even prevent them from happening. So it allows specification using ConfigFS. 
and uh, the policy can describe which assets to be monitored and which actions to be taken when certain action happen. So this is an open source technology which is available at oven.org. So if you want to play with it, I'll uh, have the link at the end of the slide. So some more details about the IKGT framework is that you can have the policy data in a JSON uh, uh, framework and it can be passed on to the config FS. And there's an IKGT driver which is running. And then it would eventually pass that policy to the X1 and then store it into the policy table. So the last topic I want to cover with respect to the hardware uh, assisted security for containers is the runtime isolation work that we are doing uh, with respect to uh, Intel Clear Container. So Intel Clear Containers, as you uh, uh, may have heard in the opening day keynote uh, session, it is thought of as one of the biggest innovation that Intel has done uh, with respect to containers, even though it's, it can be thought of as bug fixing, but still uh, it's a very powerful uh, technology which can have runtime isolation of uh, containers. So the idea is to use Intel uh, VT instead of namespaces for isolation in containers, which provides an extra hardware uh, based uh, security layer. And you, will, you can still support the same container uh, deployment models. So you'll still get the advantages of the container uh, models such as Docker. So you will still package your application using Docker. But instead of running them in a in, uh, operating system based virtualization, you can run them in a very lightweight, thin uh, VM based isolation, so, which is assisted by hardware. So we'll use Intel VT which will provide the isolation and which will provide the extra security between the two containers. This, this is addressing the threat that I talked about where there's an adversary in one of the containers and it is trying to break out into another container. So the trusted computing work that we've done would also address uh, this attack in the sense that it would prevent the tampering to happen in the first place at the time of launch of container. But if the tampering happens somehow, this would limit the attack inside that particular container and not expose it to other containers. So this is just showing that these containers are now protected by this extra Intel VTX. And we are working with, uh, we have all already integrated it with, uh, with Rocket. So in the Rocket, you can have different stages. So there's a stage one which would uh, uh, use the a default namespace, whereas you can also have another stage which, which can use this VT-based um, containers. So summarizing what we've talked about, uh, the key takeaways, the threat that we have, uh, we have addressed, the integrity, uh, the tempering of the platform or the host, the tempering of the container itself, and also breaking out from one container outside to another container or to the platform itself. And the technologies that we are shown, we have shown to uh, prevent some of these attacks, Intel Cloud Integrity Technology, Intel uh, Kernel Guard Technology, and Intel Clear Containers. So Intel uh, CIT or the Cloud Integrity Technology, the essential idea is to use Intel uh, Trusted Execution Technology, but expose it from the hardware all the way to the application. Because Intel TXT, the problem has been that it's kind of, uh, as you have heard in uh, a previous session this morning, 11.50, where IBM was talking about the challenges that they had when they were trying to use Intel TXT and TPM. And the uh, famous, uh, quote I like there was that TPM have been a novel feature which have existed for 20 years. So the TPM have existed for a long time, but to actually expose it all the way to the application, that has been a significant driver for the adoption of uh, just read computing. OpenStack can launch VMs and containers uh, uh, using uh, this uh, architecture that we presented and introducing the trusted compute pools. So here are some of the links to get started on uh, these things. 
And uh, we also demoed this, but since this is the last session of the day, the demos have already closed here. So I'll open for uh, question and answers at this point of time. Sorry. Take a picture. There is there is a small, very lightweight, uh, clear Linux, yeah. which would be there inside mm -hmm. uh, every container. So is it a but container or a virtual machine? So it <laughs> 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 that's a good question. That's uh, that that depends on how you define a container versus VM. It you can think of it as a container if you think about say the launch time being in milliseconds and so on. If you think in terms of having a operating system within that particular sandbox, you can think of it as a VM. I, I'd like to add sure. to his comment, and it's very good. It's really a double batch container, a container and a virtual machine. Right. And what we're trying to say is you can be agnostic of whether it's a virtual machine or a container if the launch time is a snap. The packaging is a, you know, really dense. So that's what we're trying to say. Use virtualization technology to call you the isolation, but the container launch key, which is what generally containers do use, so you can pack thousands outside, of containers. Outside, outside. Right. So that Linux kernel is really, really tiny, slim, small footprint. The rest of the kernel, we've optimized everything so that it's like a core OS or a tiny operating system, a tiny, tiny kernel. So that's what we want you to be, agnostic of how it's implemented. It's Thanks, Mali. So to give some uh, quantification number, I think the size of this kernel is, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like 18 to 20 MB or so. So it's very small. It's not like a uh, full-fledged kernel. Thanks. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Yes, it is in servers uh, uh, now, and uh, there, there is also the, we have actually enhanced the one of the problems with, which has been with TXT is the activation of uh, TXT, which has been a pain. So we have uh, enhanced the activation tools for TXT, which are available on intel.com/txt. So, which makes the provisioning of TXT very easy as compared to what it has been previously. So, it's already there in the servers. So, you just need to activate it if it's not. Sure. Right. So for the launch, I think we definitely have the numbers, which is in, uh, I mean, compared to say Docker, it's still uh, maybe 100 milliseconds more, but it's still in milliseconds, uh, the launch time of containers. Wait, uh, can you complete?
So, Sure. Sure. I think we can continue the discussion offline. We are running out of time. So thank you everyone for uh, coming to this session, even though it was last session <laughs> of the day. Thank you.